Hey, sometimes to make a huge breakthrough with your golf game, all you need is a fresh perspective. So right after this, let's take a look at something I've covered before on this channel, with, but with a whole new angle. And hopefully I'll get some of you watching at home get you to that aha moment. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. So one of the huge keys for distance and accuracy is making what we might call an on-plane release. Really is critical if you're ever going to hit the ball consistently long and straight and become a really good golfer. You're going to have to get pretty good at this. Now take a look at the photo I'm putting up right now into my follow through and a lot of you out there would swear, well, Steve, it looks like you're rolling your right forearm over the left forearm as you go into the follow through. And then I get all kinds of wacky comments saying, but you just can't time that. You can't time that wrist action that you're telling us to do. It's uh, you're rolling it over. And that's not what Mike Austin said. That's not what the pros are doing. Nobody's rolling their forearms over. That's all timing. So. Let's change the perspective and take a closer look at what I think you should be doing to what we'd call plane the release. Now from this angle, what we might call up the line, looking back from the fairway back to the tee, gives us a really fresh perspective on what the club head and the shaft and the hands and arms are doing through impact and post impact. Now, what do we mean by planing the release. Well, we've got a wrist and elbow action. The right elbow is straightening and then the left elbow folds into the follow through. The shaft and the head are coming around the correct plane, which means you would approach the ball from shallow in the slot on the inside. The hands are going to curve around the body. The club will approach the back of the ball, but around an arc from the inside. Hopefully the shaft is about the same height you started with at address. So where you see a lot of people getting in trouble is getting that shaft out of way and tall. Really will make you have to flip the club. So you'd like the shaft to stay low, like this. The hands are curving around the body. Club is coming in just from the inside. Hits it on the way up. And now to keep the plane, keep the release on plane, we're going to continue to arc left this way so that the face of the club does not have to toe over at all for you to hit the ball straight every time. Just like that. Now, when you look at that motion from a new angle, you can see that the forearms do not actually cross over. It was really only your perspective. Watch this move again. Hit the ball. I'm on the way up. Up and left. Hinging the wrists rapidly for that big club head speed. Now, can you see how my forearms have actually not crossed over? It looks very different from this angle, doesn't it? Nor does the face of the club look like it's towing over nearly as much. So with this fresh perspective, you can really see and start to picture in your own mind the arc the club head needs to travel around you in order to make the ball go straight. And then the freedom, the handle path working left, and the hands really throwing that club head explosively. It's going to get you the distance. Now let's hit one. Hopefully I will not break the camera. <laughs> we'll slow it down right after this and we'll check and see if I'm doing what I'm preaching.
All right, the numbers for that shot are coming up on the screen. Perfectly straight ball down the middle. Should have whizzed right past the camera, which is fun. And we're going to look at that in slow-mo here. You can see pretty close to what I'm describing. My swing always needs a little bit more work, but for the most part, you can see coming into it, the shaft is a little bit higher than where I started, but not noticeably so. And then the club is working this way, and there's very little rotation of the shaft around itself as I'm coming through the impact zone. It's just like that. Now before you run out and start trying to attempt this planar release, let me give you out there two warnings. A lot of you are already outside in because your shaft is too steep or vertical and over the top on the way down. And exiting like I'm prescribing is simply going to make you swing out to in more. So a planar release would mean that the club is coming from the shallow inside slot to begin with. So if you don't find yourself close to that and you're more like this if you ever video yourself then this might be the first thing you'd want to work on is getting here because then the curve around you makes perfect sense to create a straight path through the ball even a slightly inside to out path for a draw but we really hard to do it attacking here attacking here now brings that thing right on around us in a beautiful arc. The second thing you want to be very cautious about is in the motion of the pelvis. The action of the pelvis will absolutely interrupt a good planar release. So let's say again we're, we're coming in at this angle and if I can keep my butt back and I have a little bit of flexion in the hips going through the impact zone, it'll really encourage me to swing on a shallow plane and then my pelvis will be out of the way for what I need to do with this handle, which is here, and do that. You can see that if I do some kind of humping or early extension as I go through like this, and I'm up on my toes this way, my arms kind of trapped behind me, all of a sudden my hip and my thigh are occupying the space that I'm trying to make this planar release on. It's going to encourage the chaff to get taller, my body to stop rotating, and encourage the handle path to go more linear and less curvilinear around me, which allows the head of the club to really kick like it's throwing a hockey slap shot at it and pulling the handle up and left and back. That's really giving us that extra distance, but it's not going to happen for you very well unless you've got the pelvis staying back out of the way through the impact zone. Alright, so two things to consider there before you dive headlong into practicing making more of a planar or arc release of the club head. The better you get at this, the more fun golf will be because you'll just hit it long and straight all day. Hey, hit me up in the comment section below if you've got any questions or concerns about jumping into this move that's ultimately, I think, going to help you become really good at golf. But thanks again for watching my channel. I hope I've earned a like and subscribe today. I'm Steve, and as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.